Thank you very much, Henry. I see since Brussels you have not lost your zeal for uh, United Nations. And I'm for still jet lagged. Believe me, I'm jet lagged still. I'm happy to hear that again. I live in London, not Accra. <laughs> um, Mr. President uh, um, uh, and uh, all distinguished panelists, uh, uh, I'm very happy to be here uh, because I think at the end of this very rich week um, uh, to talk about uh, shaping the global development agenda in the new narrative probably is, is the right uh, uh, time. Uh, and if somebody is worried that there is no new narrative, and you, Henry, you should not be worried because I think uh, in any single of, uh, of the development agenda uh, in broad terms, uh, I think we are having not only new narrative. And the, the challenge now is uh, how to make this uh, narrative relevant and also how to make it uh, uh, operational. And as the Secretary General uh, said many times, uh, the new post-2015 agenda must be ambitious, inclusive, and universal. And uh, I, can, uh, I can agree with uh, everything uh, that uh, uh, Mr. Shin, the Deputy Minister of Multilateral and Global Affairs of the Ministry of uh, Foreign Affairs of Republic of Korea just said, uh, because I do believe that uh, uh, the future uh, global dialogue has to have uh, all these elements. He mentioned two. I think we may also elaborate and uh, 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 dissect them uh, into uh, also uh, some other important elements. But let me just say that uh, uh, what is most important from the point of view of uh, such an agency as UNESCO, intergovernmental agency that is working in the area of education, culture and sciences, uh, it is that it is people-centered, that uh, it has uh, uh, all the country level, uh, which is uh, uh, transparent. We have all the elements of uh, a future um, monitoring accountability system. And uh, we have uh, within the United Nations a very interesting debate, including at UNESCO, on what the uh, Secretary General wants from us uh, to do. It is uh, how we are fit for the purpose. I think from, uh, from certain period on, we have to think in a very concrete terms of how we really uh, secure, ensure this monitoring accountability system and bring it down to the uh, country level. I think here what will be crucial, and it has been mentioned in uh, many of the high-level reports on sustainability, uh, it is about data. It is about how we not only collect data, how we evaluate this data, how on the basis of the da this data we accompany countries also to, uh, uh, r to draft the right and introduce the right uh, public policies. From the uh, perspective of, uh, of UNESCO, I would like to give the example of this new narrative with the education. And I know because yesterday the uh, open working group was dealing also uh, in the morning with the education. And here uh, I believe uh, we have uh, changed the, not only the narrative, but we are really introducing an inclusive universal agenda. And uh, with the initiative of the Secretary General Ban Ki-moon, I would like to come back to this one which he launched the two years ago, Education First. I think for the, not only the first time, a Secretary General has put education on the global political agenda, not only development, but political agenda. And I would like once again to commend him for that, to support him for that. But also, we tried to breach the current development agenda goal, Education for All, to put a new narrative and to bridge it also with the future educational goals. The initiative of the Secretary General, which is now transpiring also within the debate about uh, the future uh, education goal, in fact has three ele elements which are a new narrative of the education uh, for sustainability and for development. Picking up on the unfinished business, education for all, I think part of the uh, ambition of member states with the post-2015 agenda and it should be rightfully so. It's unfinished business and this is where we, we pick up and we say access to education is important. We have the first element. Then we say what is the impediment of uh, uh, access to education? What is the impediment further of making education really fit for the purpose, education for the 21st century, and why kids go to school and get out of school without knowing how to write and read in many contexts, or why education does not give the skills to young people to find their jobs and place to work, and then why we don't have trained teachers and we come to the quality of education. So this is the new narrative also. 
in the future development goal. And then the third pillar of the Education First Initiative of the Secretary General, which we strongly support and want to introduce also, is that education is not only about knowing how to write and read, but education also is about how we support the environment, how we change our mentality, how we also, uh, what kind of values we put into education systems, whether education serves for gender equality, whether education also serves for sustainability. This is where uh, education for sustainable development comes. And we will have our major conference this year in Nagoya, in Japan, wrapping up the United Nations Education for Sustainable Development. And then with, new, with this new narrative, we think we have to speak about education for global citizenship. I think this is a new narrative. It's a totally new narrative that we are all introducing to the sustainable sustainability in the post-2015 agenda. And I hope that, and I would like to thank the Republic of Korea, because next year there is another major event in May. We will have in Incheon a major conference on education, which will be kind of uh, taking the stock of all these big debates, of all these important new narratives, and adopt and bring it at the end of the day to the United Nations. So I just give one example. But I think in most of the areas, if you look across the areas, we have a totally new narrative on, on sustainability and development. Thank you.